Welcome to my studio, welcome to my slippers. We're doing something different today. We're looking at different light sources and specifically LED versus flash as a stills photographer. So let me give you a bit of, bit of backstory here because I am a stills photographer. Yes, I shoot some video for clients, but not enough so that I would invest in video lighting specifically. Now I own video lighting, but well, until this stuff arrived, nothing good because we rent everything. And the same with still stuff really, like this entire studio here is my kind of play area. This is where I do my test shoots. I have an office back there where I do my admin. I store bits and pieces. This is not my main working place for making money. This kit is not my main working kit for making money because when you work as a commercial photographer, you rent most of the gear, you rent the studio and the location you need to be shooting at, which is normally London. I live in Leicester, it's an hour away but socially it's like a different planet. So all of this stuff here is not, not for work, it's just for, for playing, which is, I know, privileged beyond belief, but then 15 years hard graft to be able to have all this stuff as well. Now we do the odd job in here, you know, we do the odd small job in here when clients don't have the budget, but generally speaking, this is, this is the fun place to play and to make YouTube videos. So the reason I don't own or didn't own video lights is because I couldn't justify having a light just for video sat in here when video makes me so little money. But I could justify having lights like this one here, this is a Pixar Pro, which is a Godox 1200 watt. This one here, this is a Bron Color 3200 watt head. I could justify buying those for stills work for test shoots because that is where I make my bread and butter. Now, up until recent years, LED lights were not that powerful or if they were, they were very expensive. To get a powerful light, you needed a hot lamp, which meant sweating buckets and burning your fingers. So it wasn't really an option. There was no sort of product out there that could do both things. It could do both stills and video because you need at least 500 watts of light, minimum power. And you also need to not melt everything in front of it, especially in my line of work where we photograph a lot of food, a lot of drinks, and a lot of still life sort of things. We don't want to be burning our faces off. Now, lighting's obviously come a very long way since I started, which really wasn't that long ago. We're talking 15 years ago. It's not that long since I started photography. But the advancements in lighting have far outshone the advancements in cameras. This camera here sat on the back of this contraption. This is a 5 DSR, and this is kind of like the pinnacle of still photography in affordable terms. Yes, you could get a phase or a Hasselblad or something like that, but they're expensive, this is cheap. There is nothing better than this and this is seven years old. Um, and before I get questions in the comments, this is a Cambo Actus. So these are bellows, so you can focus really close and really far away. Do lens movements, tilt, shift, swing, rise, fall. And this bit on the front, which looks really cool, is just a bellows lens hood, so you can adjust it to choose the contrast from the flare. Very nerdy stuff and then it's a six by seven lens on the front. Uh, but this, this is as good as it got for cameras up until today, 2022. Nothing better has arrived for what I do. If you're a wedding photographer, the game's been completely changed by mirrorless, but for a still life studio people, this is pretty much it. Lighting wise, quite a big bit of difference. So up until very recently, if you wanted a good flash, you had Broncolor, Profoto, Elencron. And Godox is what you used if you thought you might want to burn your house down with moody batteries and all the rest of it. That was the assumption back then. However, now I shot an entire test shoot on this Godox light here yesterday, which went off as part of a treatment the day before. So other way around, day you get the gist. We didn't send the treatment before we did the shoot, but these are brilliant now. These are really well made. This is like a, an affordable flash. It's 1200 watts. It has battery and mains capabilities. Brilliant but you can't shoot a video with that. And times are a changing. I always said I'd never do video, but although I don't make much money from video at the moment, and you know, apart from, I probably make more money from YouTube videos than commercial videos, that's how little I do. It is something I want to be going into. Now I can't do video with either of these lights, but I can with this big one here. This one I can do video with to a high level. But the question is, can I also do stills with it? Because most of us do not have the budget to go, right, we'll get three video lights and we'll get three stills lights. What the ideal scenario would be for test shooting and all the rest of it is have one lighting setup where it's stills and video. Now there's obviously benefits to flash over LED. Flash has what's called a, a T-score, a flash duration, and that is how quickly the light goes from appearing to disappearing, in short. And that allows us to freeze motion. 
Now, in order to do that with one of these, we're going to need a shutter speed of one ten thousandth of a second. So I'm going to do some metering. We're going to take some photographs and we're going to sort of see whether something like this, the Aperture Light Storm 600D, not the Pro version, can replace the flash for most of us. And even if it's just a case that we replace it in the studio for the, the test shoots and all of that sort of thing, but you know, when we do get the commercial jobs, we rent it out like we always would. Is this a more cost effective and also space efficient way? Look at all the junk in here. My office through there has floor to ceiling, 14 foot high shelves, which are a meter deep and that are stacked full of kit bags. So we don't really want more stuff. We want to be able to consolidate it somewhat. Anyway, let's get a very simple scene set up. Let's get the light meters out and let's sort of see what we can achieve with these different bits of kit. Okay, so I've set everything up as close as possible. I've got the two lights here. And what I've done is I've gone for the, the Aperture 600D non-pro version and then the Pixar Pro slash Godox 1200. They are similar price points. So both around a thousand pounds, 1300 US dollars. The two lights I had, which were closest in price. Now, obviously the AD1200 is a flash and it is twice as powerful. This is 600 watts, this is 1200 watts. But apart from that, they're very similar. I would say that the LED is better build quality. So I think you save a lot of money in building an LED over a flash and you can put that money into the build quality. But what we're going to do and what really matters is, can we take still images with this kit? So I've got my camera set up here. Now, my general starting point, being a still life guy, F16, 100 ISO, 100th of a second. So what we're gonna do is set that up. Take a frame. This is on full power up here, the flat light. The light is full power and we're getting something which is looking grossly underexposed, which is fine. We've only got 600 watts, we've got some bellows, we've got loads of stuff going on. Now, if this was flash, at this point here, we'd have to bump the ISO up, which is not ideal because we're gonna lose some image quality. This is not flash we can reduce the shutter speed without it having too much of an effect. There's no other light in here. Now, in fact, let me turn these off. So this one here is lighting the scene. There we go. And this one here is lighting this. It's pretty dark in here. So once we've got these lights back on again, we're going to open up the shutter speed and just allow more light to be gathered through this. Nothing's moving. The camera's on a really sturdy stand. The pair, he's not going anywhere. So let's start going down to a 20th of a second. Now I'd recommend firing this from the computer or a remote, not the actual thing, but you know, what are you gonna do? I'm in here by myself today. Tenth of a second. Is that right exposure? That's looking good. So I'm gonna just fire one from the computer anyway, just so I know for sure that I've got one without any camera shake caused by my fat clumsy hands shaking the camera. So that's all good. There's our pair. It's not an interesting photograph, but it does a few things for us. One, it shows us the shadows and two, it shows us the capabilities. Now, these ship with something, and this is the only thing I don't like and I don't think you should use, and it's called a LS600 series hyper reflector. Now, this is better than your average reflector, but let me just quickly show what it does to the shadows down here. We have these nice crisp shadows. Now, for some reason, the build of this reflector creates a double shadow which is not something you particularly want in still life photography, but it's fine. You can get a new one for five quid. It's not a deal breaker, but just be aware that that'll cause issues with the shadows. And to be honest, most of the time I shoot without a reflector anyway. So off goes that and on comes the flash. Now, because I'm a boy, I tend to put the flash on full power and then work my way down. So let's go back to our 125th of a second. Let's turn the flash trigger on so it actually fires. Now we're looking, we're, oh, we're not even on full power, are we? Let's go to full power. Let's give it the beans. There we go. So full power is a bit too much at f16, but that's fine. We'll just dial it down a little bit, but it's still, it's not, not miles too much. Let's give that a look. There we go. Bit, bit too much. 
And yes, I know I can adjust this from the trigger. Don't tell me that. I'm so old in the game that I keep going back to the packs. I think you can even do it from an app from the computer nowadays, but there we go. Old habits and all the rest. There's that shot, that's pretty good. So that's the flash. Pretty crisp shadow, pretty nice light, good exposure. So I think we're all in agreement there that both of these work well. So what I wanna do now is just meter what exactly we're getting here. Now, obviously there's a distance involved, so it's not gonna be like a, a useful metering, but sometimes it helps just to understand the difference in power of light compared to settings. It also helps sometimes if you can remember where you left your flash meter yesterday. It's on my light stand. Jesus, there we go. So, so this is my trusty Sekonic light meter, which we use rarely, but I just want to get a meter reading here. So at 100 ISO, at a hundredth of a second, the back of my pair is 4.5, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. F4.5 is what we're getting. That's kind of meaningless. Doesn't really have any relevance at the moment, but let's compare it to the flash. And that's F18. So obviously there's a difference. They're not claiming to be the same, but to give it to you, because sometimes watts don't mean as much in terms of comparing it to aperture. So if we've got F4.5 from one and F18 from another, that's a very big difference. So let's talk about what that difference means for us as photographers. So what does this mean? It means a few things and there are some serious implications here when considering what you should buy. Now, I hopefully have made this fair by using two products on different ends of the spectrum, both of which were gifted to me. So even if I have a buyer saying buy one of them, it should be equally done. Like neither of the companies gave me more than or less than the other, nor did they have any differing terms of what I had to do with the kit. So hopefully that helps. So I'm gonna take some scenarios here and hopefully these scenarios help you decide what you should do. If you are starting out and you do some video, any video, buy something like a 600 watt aperture, non-pro version, and we'll go into a different video as to the difference between the pro and the non-pro, buy something like that and it will see you right for many years to come. If you're at the point where you're already shooting commercially and you're doing maybe small jobs at like a thousand pounds a day and you do any video, the aperture's a good move for you. If you're more in the ballpark where you're perhaps charging 10 grand plus a day, then the aperture lights wouldn't be a replacement for flash. I don't think that I could fully replace my lights with LEDs, but I do now think I can justify buying LEDs to have in my sort of test shoot studio because they are now affordable and affordable is a very relative term. When I started out in photography, I had to borrow a camera because I couldn't afford one, but money kind of snowballs in the industry and things become easier to procure as you go along. It seems impossible to have all of this when I started out and now I have it. It's, it, it's smaller steps to get more and more stuff. It, it's Anyway, I digress. I could easily buy three or four of these Aperture 600 lights and I could use them to create good quality, commercially viable video test shoots using this Blackmagic 6K, a bit of 120 frames a second, some nice like movements and food porn sort of shots. This is achievable, but it wouldn't be able to replace flash for me because I'm a nutter and I like F22 and I like to have massive lens movements and I like the flash to be at least 1200 watts. So for me, I couldn't replace it. There are instances where I could, but not often. If you're not charging 10 grand or more a day and you're not doing big worldwide campaigns, this could be the one lighting solution for you. This could be it. This could be everything you need. For years, I shot with Bowen's 500 watt heads until I got to a certain level and needed bigger ones because of the style of work I do. This could have easily replaced that and it would have been better because the modeling lights in those always burnt out and they always overheated the lights. Whereas with this, you don't have that issue. You don't have the problems of recycling time. So I think if you're not charging that premium thing and more importantly, even if you are, if your style doesn't dictate that you need to be able to get 1600 watts of light out at a minimum, this is a very real option in order to move away from flash. Now, obviously the downside to this is what if you want to freeze motion? What if you need that one ten thousandth of a flash duration? You're not gonna get that with these 600 watt lights. 
your ISO is going to have to be bumped up so high that you're still going to need something like a Broncolor Scoro pack. But of course, these things are not even comparable. Broncolor Scoro pack is 14,000 and the head is two. So we've got 16,000 pounds of kit there. This light costs a thousand. It's not really a comparable thing. You, you could buy enough of these to actually still do it with the LEDs and get the same result in should speed. You just need to buy a lot of them. Anyway, I hope some of this is of use to you because I know I've not given you a prescriptive answer, which is perhaps what you were hoping for. But my general consensus here is, unless you're charging 10 grand or more a day, if you have any video in your workflow at all, use these LEDs for stills and save yourself money from having two different systems. If you're charging more than that, you will know what you need. It won't even be a discussion in your head going, do I need this or do I need that? You'll just be going, I have a problem. There is a solution. Can't afford to buy it because it's too expensive. I'll rent it per job. Anyway, I hope this video has been of use to you. It's a bit different to my normal fare. I just thought I'd try a new format. See you soon. Bye-bye.